Hello everyone, this is the Hiskit textbook reading sessions. Once again we are back, this is the second week and we will be covering the second session which is uh, the last two chapters of the first uh, section of the Kiska textbook that is poly matrices and the block sphere and uh, states for many qubits. Uh, we will be leaving uh, these two parts from chapter two uh, for uh, tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let's let's get on with it. Uh, let's make a quick poll. Just to have everyone on board once again. This might have some sort of feedback, but uh, I hope we can uh, avoid that. Hi, Junior, can you hear me? Hello? Okay, so I've also started the slap code just to see if it works if it works perfectly. Uh, seems to for now. Okay, so we will be covering um, these two parts as also indicated in the in the messages on the Slack channel. And uh, yeah, if, if there's any questions uh, during uh, the reading and coding time, you can always uh, drop them in the Slack channel over there. Um, if there's nothing else, uh, let's uh, start reading and coding soon. Uh, after one hour and thirty minutes, uh, let's say at twelve forty, twelve forty, twelve forty p.m. Uh, Indian Standard Time. Uh, uh, let's get back to the problems uh, and have a discussion over these two chapters, polymatrices and states for many qubits. So, uh, if there's no other questions, if there's nothing else, um, let's get down to the reading and coding part. Is that okay with everyone? Mm. All right then. So I will. I will stop the call now. I will. Uh, I will make a call again uh, during the discussion time and let's start.
All right, we are back with the discussion session. Uh, can you guys hear me? Can you hear me? I, I can hear you. Am I audible to you? Are we recording this on the YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so all of this is uh, live on the YouTube, and uh, I've also connected the Slack call so that people who are uh, on the Slack channel and would like to join in the conversation can uh, uh, join in this discussion live. So, uh, yeah, everyone is uh, online right now. Okay. So, um, as we discussed before, we are here with the with the last two. Like well, today's agenda involves the last two chapters of. Uh, the section quantum states and qubits and the first two uh, first two chapters of the second section which is single and multi qubit gates uh, we will uh, leave these two parts the introduction and quantum gates uh, for the session tomorrow uh, and we would like to uh, work on poly matrices and the block sphere and states for many qubits I know it was uh, probably a very math intensive section uh, uh, it, it didn't involve a lot of code, but I believe that um, uh, covering parts from the previous section and uh, it having a lot of, uh, of you know mathematical heavy concepts and code heavy concepts would would cover up for for most of the stuff uh, in this session today. So uh, uh, yeah, if if there's any questions uh, on the chat or or anywhere else, um, feel free to 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 ask a question right away. Mm -hmm. I feel that this section is actually lighter than last week. I personally think maybe if we do this again, we should move the chapter 1.4 from session 1 to session 2. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the, these two uh, chapters were definitely less intensive. But uh, yeah, as, as we keep on moving forward, the, the, the workload with each chapter is going to increase uh, a lot. So uh, I think it's it's best if we uh, use these uh, you know these early sessions as a way to sort of uh, adjust to to the pace uh, of you know uh, condensing everything into an hour and thirty minutes and uh, then having a quick discussion in the last uh, you know twenty thirty minutes. Mm -hmm. But I feel the session one was too much. Yeah, the session one was so, too much. I mean, yeah, the the prerequisites part uh, uh, definitely. Uh, I, I believe some some people were still uh, trying to cover it. So uh, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. the the uh, idea is like you can uh, use these sessions to to cover up if you missed out anything, and if you still have questions from the previous sections, uh, feel free to to ask those questions. And uh, yeah, just use this time constructively uh, as uh, as best you guys feel like it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, I'm looking at the chat right now. Uh, if there's any questions at all, anywhere. Ra Rahul uh, is here. Rahul is here. Hi, Rahul. Hi, guys. I, I'm just like looking into things. Yeah, for mathematical doubts or anything like that, I'm good with. Oh, like I'm okay with that. Awesome. 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 Yes. Yeah, so we also have Rahul as as a volunteer. If if you guys yeah. have any questions, uh, please feel free to uh, to to uh, you know. Uh, uh, get get asking and and uh, if you guys are on the chat here anyone uh, has any uh, suggestions or or you know if, if you would like to uh, contribute to to the session today uh, uh please go ahead the floor is yours mm -hmm. so as mm -hmm. usual i have a lot of feedback so if no one asks, amazing amazing yeah yeah so so please go ahead <laughs> yeah yeah start with it i'd love that mm -hmm. okay Maybe I can share it on the Slack, right? It will appear on your oh, YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, yeah. Channel. So, 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 so should I uh, switch the window to the Slack channel? Uh, yeah. Uh, let me, yeah. That let would me be see good. how I share my screen. Okay, share my screen. Do you see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. On the Slack channel, right? Yeah, we can see your screen now. Yeah. Okay. So, as I said, so I think the session one was too much, but session two is a little bit less. So if you are going to do it again, I would suggest, I mean, the, in the agenda, maybe you can move chapter 1.4. Mm -hmm. 
So, but uh, of course, it's freestyle. Everyone can just do it differently. But I just think maybe helps people to feel uh, like to keep it on check. Okay, so so, 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 on, so one uh, suggestion is to move chapter one point four uh, from session one to session two. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So later, I will also send all these feedbacks to the um, to the Slack channel to yeah for people to keep track of it. So some are already detailed, but. Uh, so I have one suggestion for previous chapter. I felt that in chapter 1.2, the atom of computation, introduction of half adder and explaining how it does in classical computer and then using that to introduce like the C not gate and other things seems to be not very, um, doesn't really help me to appreciate or understand better quantum computing. All right, all right. So, 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 uh, yeah, I think that's I, I actually, really... yeah, I, I took kind of agree with that. I feel like that's like the part with the gate should be first, and we should you know, uh, approach the the half hour later. Uh, you know, maybe a chapter after that. Uh, what do you think about that? I, I feel that the intention of that chapter was trying to give you a primer of what is the quantum computation, and then from chapter two. Or from chapter a uh, later chapter is trying to lay down the mathematical foundation, but I feel that chapter instead of giving you a feeling of it, rather than it like intimidate, and then you don't want to. I think starting from Pauli matrices maybe is a good thing. Okay, so uh, so you would recommend to to move the Pauli matrices and the the mathematical heavy section first, and mm -hmm. and move the uh, move the implementation with gates and with. Uh, 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 constructing a half adder to to a later section, maybe right after that. Yeah, think. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Noted. Uh, and then yeah. more specific things. I think one of the biggest thing is that um, actually it's in the in the gate. I think the gate operation is a bit mm -hmm. abstract. It would be nice if you can uh, add some animation of the block sphere, the block vector moving, like then okay. we can uh, visualize so it much better. Yeah, I think uh, we have okay, uh, animation this. GIFs available for, for block spheres and uh, uh, maybe we can uh, make a pull request uh, sometime this week, uh, I mean this weekend or maybe the, the uh, uh, weekdays uh, in the next week to uh, add those GIFs uh, of the block sphere onto, you know, uh, along with each each uh, relevant gate. Mm -hmm. Especially, I think, X, Y, Z maybe is okay for yeah. some, most yeah, yeah, people, yeah. maybe. But when you have Halama gate, you say in between X and Z, I mean, there's many space between X and Z in the middle. It could be Y, it could be... So I think it would be nice to visualize that. Understood. Yeah, yeah. That I, I agree. Like, yeah, visualization would help uh, a lot of beginners. And, and Blocksphere is just elementarily more, uh, uh, you know, easy to grasp in, in terms of concept. Mm -hmm. Except also, uh, in early chapter, you already introduced the Blocksphere, but we don't really use that concept to explain further concept afterwards. Right, right, so it right, seems right. like it doesn't really help. So I think that would be uh, a key point. Oh, uh, uh, June? Uh, I, think, I think Rahul has something to add. Go on, Rahul. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So here's the thing. There for visualization and other things, uh, there are modules such as Qtip already available, and mm -hmm. if you don't want to use it, then there is this site named as QControl. If you want to use it, you can use that too. So something mm -hmm. like that can be used during the talks. It is not necessary to add that in the book itself because book they, when somebody downloads the book to a PDF file, then mm -hmm. it won't be like uh, able to see the GIFs. I guess uh, GIFs are not available in PDF, right? Am I right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, not. It's, I, I don't think so. It's but, available in a PDF, but but yeah. Well, I have a yeah. feeling that most people will use the online version. Yeah, yeah, most people would be know. using I either use the, the online, online version or the or the Jupyter notebook, like because uh, yeah. to, to code simultaneously uh, mm. uh, with the, with the text would make more sense for most users. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think providing that option would be ideal, as as Jimmy has suggested. Yeah. And, and if anyone wants to you can, experiment you can always further, have this one line thing that if you are using PDF, exactly, you won't be able exactly, to yeah. Really refer to the online version. Sounds good. Sounds good. And and if anyone yeah, yeah. wants to, uh, you know, um, uh, experiment with that further, they can. Uh, we we can maybe add a short resource to Qtip or or maybe add add a link. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. other cons. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so there are things like oh, what you're saying for visualization and other things. I guess uh, 
we can use sites such as Q, uh, Q control is basically paid, but Qtip is free. So we can use Qtip for that. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, your second doubt was, I guess, uh, can you please repeat your, uh, this thing? You said something about rotation gates, doing the matrix part first and gates passed uh, uh, after that. Can you please repeat that? Oh, well, man is, um, yeah. you know, in the chapter 1.2, right? So mm -hmm. it's been uh, in a really long manner explaining all these things, how a mm -hmm. half edge works on a classical computer. And then the analog is on quantum computer is this, you have a CNOT gate and you have a softly mm -hmm. gate. I do after whole this chapter, I still don't appreciate how, I mean, how a quantum computing is more powerful, but rather the opposite that you feel something that you can do so easily using a classic computer, you need to do so many things to just repeat that. And this okay. is more really uh, what you want to show. Okay, let me clarify this thing to you. Uh, mm -hmm. The point is not, oh, okay, yeah. The point is not here to uh, do the same operation as you do in classical computer. What, mm -hmm. he, he, what we do here is basically, see, all the trans transformation in a quantum system is unitary so you can get a uh, start uh, from if you start from point a and reach to point b you can mm -hmm. go to point a back just by reversing the same operation yes, there is yes. a uh, uh, what to say an axiom in uh, information theory uh, we call it max maxwell demon maximal De uh, demon theorem if there is mm -hmm. a demon uh, demon mm -hmm. who uh, takes uh, LN, uh, K, K ln 2 energy to destroy data, you don't need to destroy mm -hmm. data, so you don't require any energy. So yeah, what you then do, you're saying about Landerer's principle that whether you need yeah. energy to destroy entropy, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. but okay. here is not yeah, really, okay. here is not really, uh, I think after reading this chapter, I feel that you're trying to help, I mean, assuming that maybe you are more, readers are more familiar with the classical computer and help you to connect this things but i feel it explain a lot and uh, doesn't really help okay, so that's my um, opinion so if you and are, here i don't think it explain the reversible computation okay yeah so you want to know more about computation uh basically like what's the ben what we should add here is that the benefit of uh, using quantum computer uh what is cla classical computer so what you can do uh basically uh, in this thing, this uh, operation can be further simplified. Further simplified in the me means that, uh, uh, can you please go up uh, to the part where there was a quantum circuit? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Thank you. So what you can do is basically, uh, instead of using Q2 and Q3, you can use uh, Q0 as uh, one more reading qubit and do the operation in the Q1, uh, Q0 itself. So it reduces the gates and uh, basically simplifies the adder much more. So, uh, yeah. I understand, you... but that's not my point. I'm not saying that the quantum circuit is too complicated. What yeah. I'm saying is that introduce a lot of concepts. A lot of people may not even know what's half adder. Okay, and yeah. still after the whole subjector, you don't, I don't think it helps me to understand okay. what is quantum computing or to okay. feel the benefit of quantum computing. So if you also we can do, yeah. So what we can do is basically shift this part to, uh, to after two point two or something like that. We have to basically. Yeah, that, I think that would be more reasonable. Uh, two point three or two point two? Which one? Uh, doesn't matter. I think two point three that is like it doesn't really follow everything else, so it doesn't matter. I think, or maybe uh, even two point four. Or, um. You can introduce all the gates first, and then you. Yeah, yeah maybe two point two. Two point two is better, I guess, because two point three is basically chronicle product and different things, unitary transform. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's spectral yeah. form. Okay, two point two is good. I guess two point two is good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then let me see. There's um. Also, mm -hmm. I don't remember that we talk about the reversible operation and stuff before but in this chapter it mentioned a, a few times that um the power operators can be let me for look at it uh something here so yeah. uh 
since the matrices are unitary and therefore mm -hmm. define a re reversible quantum operation and then mm -hmm. that's why we can define them as the gate. Of course, it all makes sense, but if you don't have mm -hmm. any knowledge before, I mean, the textbook didn't cover this part and this sentence can be really confusing. Yeah, agreed. Uh, yeah, that, that sentence you specifically have, can be confusing. You don't have physics background or, or uh, mathematical background, background yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so what... Uh, what uh, Okay, so I what, what I would say is yeah. uh, you can add one sentence like since these matrices are unitary, which means that the operation doesn't change the length or the model. I mean, there's a one sentence explanation what it does, and why is that reversible? I think you need like a whole subject to explain why unitary operations are reversible. Yeah, I mean, there's many things unless there was a chapter before or a chapter that you can refer to explain this concept. Otherwise. It's and then doesn't really help. Uh, for uh, these things, okay, wait, uh, okay, yeah. So for these things like uh, re re for reversibility or uh, like uh, you are saying, uh, you being uh, matrix unitary, what we can do, we can give them links, like uh, yeah, links to notes, uh, no, links to uh, Nancha Shuang chapter where it was given, like for, uh, it was, okay. I guess, mm -hmm. uh, well, first, there is another another thing yeah. I want to point out is mm -hmm. I think the references in the book okay. should yeah. not point to the book of Nelson and Chang because Nelson and Chang is more open source or nothing you can assess online. I mean, people yeah. may not have it. Okay, so I yeah. think we should link to a Wikipedia or something else that or Mathematica Wiki or that no people can just link and click to because okay, you yeah. look at the book. I mean, you cannot buy the book or. I mean, okay, right? so are you okay with are you okay? Okay, are you okay with the uh, uh, notes of uh, I guess what uh, uh, the professor or from physics or other things? Uh, so whatever wait, that thing we can go online would be much better than just yeah, referring yeah. to chapter one of Nelson and Chang. Yeah, yeah, that's so, it. They let me check. Let me check. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, pro probably we can we can add uh, uh, a wik a Wikipedia or an open source link along with the with the yeah. you know original source yeah. of the book. So and that, the yeah. yeah. So the one so so people have who have the book. Refer. Yeah. And uh, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, I guess uh, link for the notes of John Pascal's will also be good because it has yeah. quite a precise Excel. Yeah, but of course you don't want to provide uh, too many references yeah. for one concept. So I think. Maybe no, 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 for different Let's do different one. Content. Yeah, I think we should always provide one link that people can just assess for free. Since it's an open source textbook, so whatever reference is ideally to be open source or free accessible also. Okay, yeah, yeah. I guess uh, then Nelson Shuang rules out, and then we can move for the second option, which is Wiki. But Wiki has a lot of explanation for. Yeah, sometimes it's too much, not yeah. specific to so, computing. So yeah. what will so we can, it depends uh, on what whatever concept we want to include, we should yeah just choose okay. different one. Alternatively, uh, uh, yeah, sorry, go on, Rob. Uh, yeah, so uh, John Pascal's notes are free. It's uh, on website. Mm -hmm. You're anyone can view that. So we can use that too yeah, as a. Uh, yeah, and uh, I guess Professor even won't have any issue with that since it's on Caltech website. I we can yeah. uh, like. Uh, Access it, access it anytime. So yeah, I will basically uh, tell uh, write this on the Slack channel, or you can even write this that we can access these things. So I guess that mm -hmm. would just yeah, as a right. friendly reminder, I will be adding uh, a feedback thread right after this call. So so any suggestions yeah, or yeah, yeah yeah so so any suggestions or anything that you would like to add, please add to the feedback thread. Thank you. Oh, okay okay mm -hmm. no issues. Thank and, you. And uh, another part, I think there was some part mentioning about the hardware. Yeah, and it was out of nowhere that I don't know. I don't understand personally what is frame change, was pre-frame and post-frame change and X five over two pounds. I think it's where two hardware control is difficult for people to understand unless we include like a section or something to have some idea, or we just uh, remove it. Uh, you can remove it, be uh, but there's one more thing I want to clarify. Uh, mm -hmm. For quantum computers, there are some basic set of gates. Like which mm -hmm. uh, follow for uh, like if you say it to go to state A, it follows mm -hmm. one or two operation to go, go to state A, and mm -hmm. these operations are basically uh, the basis of that. Uh, like for some uh, 
of the known quantum computer use rx ry as a basis or rx rg as a basis mm -hmm. whereas uh, ibm i guess uses u3 as a basis mm -hmm. so this is the thing about that so what they they are saying is basically a uh, frame change so you give them an operation they goes mm -hmm. into it uh, like a familiar frame does the operation and then get back to the post frame that is what mm -hmm. they are trying to say so what does uh, it mean by frame like which axis you choose as xyz uh which axis it chooses at xyz uh, see it's not uh, about axis what it is that uh, it has a set of uh, like basis gate right so first it takes your command and then converts the same command into its basis gate uh, the unroller do you remember unroller hmm i don't know okay you don't know okay so there is this uh, unroller what it does is basically your uh, it converts your c not simple c not into set of Two to eight, uh, some eight or ten gates. I don't remember the exact number. Mm -hmm. So you are saying about transpiler? Yeah, transpiler. Yeah, mm -hmm. transpiler or unroller. So yeah, so what transpiler does? It tells you that how many operation ultimately mm -hmm. going to uh, be performed. Yes, yes, of course. All this. Well, I'm, I'm not saying this doesn't make sense. What I'm mm -hmm. saying is that you we should always assume the reader only have the knowledge of whatever you assume at the beginning, which is linear algebra. Python. Yeah, yeah. And so here's out of nowhere, suddenly say have a frame change that at least we should provide a reference somewhere else to explain for those that have done understand. And I think a lot of people don't understand what it means. Or X power over two powers. I mean, we didn't explain anything hardware before. So it's really hard to for people to appreciate what this means, right? Okay, yeah. So let me show you something. Uh can I share mm -hmm. my screen okay. over here? Yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, can you see this thing? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's visible. Yeah, so, yeah, so what I did is basically I use an IX gate and an H gate, but what this quantum computer, let's not name it, takes as a command is basically a RZ rotation, pi by 2 on 0, RX rotation, RZ minus pi by 2. So, RZ mm -hmm. pi by 2 is basically going into your frame. And then mm -hmm. performing the operation and coming back to your frame is RZ minus pi by two. That is the thing it wanted to like basically express in that sentence. But I do think that it's too much for a reader to uh, grasp that at once. So yeah, you can remove it. Okay, so is it similar to like you want to do an experiment? You need to apply for the Hadamard gate. Uh, yeah, like frame change of. in that sense. Yeah, frame change. In and then you go back. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I see. So yeah, okay. uh, and then you need to do the opposite of that frame change to go back to the original frame. So that's yeah. what it means like pre post frame change. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, pretty good. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. If you can ex explain, or I mean, I think it's too much to explain. I don't yeah, know why that okay. needs to be added. Uh, uh, what, what, what about uh, like uh, what do you suggest if uh, if there is a way to um, you know add us hyperlinks to to that part of the text uh, within the Jupyter notebook so that uh, we can directly link to that particular portion to an open source yeah. resource without actually you know, so. claiming a reference down below uh, as, as yeah, is also yeah. done on like most websites including Wikipedia uh, I think I think that would mm -hmm. remove the uh, uh, you know the excess text uh, down below and can you know provide easy access to the to the reader who might be confused with with terms like these. Yeah. Okay. So okay. Well, I even think maybe no necessary at all to mention any of this. I don't know. That's all right, my opinion. All right, all right. I mean, so so we okay. Right, so like, that's also good. Yeah. You already do and you already you already talk about all this uh, one thing. How you actually can show people don't even know you are using a supercalculating cube, using a microwave houses. I mean, there's a lot of assumption that you you. Yeah. Make. I mean, all these basics should be independent of hardware. So we don't need to care about how the hardware implements. Yeah, so basically this book goes for a uh, software part or basically computation part of the whole thing, whole quantum computer thing. So I would say so, that so just, we can mention this by maybe almost the end of the book after you cover most of the fundamentals of quantum computing. Okay, right. so, the, so, so the suggestion yeah. is to either remove it or to move it to uh, uh, the lower part of the, or the, or the lower yeah, section. Yeah, maybe like other one, one how 
you actually execute the program and how does it reach to the IBM Q cloud server and how this control, maybe they can have a one chapter explain the whole process, how you run on your computer and then goes to the, to do the actual operation. Understood, okay. Yeah. So yeah, these are the yeah, general comments. There's more, more other things, but yeah. I think that's all I want to say. Yeah, I think we still, uh, you still have some uh, points on multi-qubit gates to cover. I, I think we still have about uh, five to ten minutes of time. So if you want to go through those, because okay. I don't think anyone else is that's joining true. at the moment. So so might as well go okay. with those. Yeah. Let me check. Um, yeah, so there's a part of saying why the multi-qubit gates called CX and CCX. Some language form, I think it's more clear to change a bit. So, for example, here, multi-qubit gates, and here it shows CX and CCX, right? And this sentence trying to explain why C0 is, no, didn't explain, but it says C0 is referred to CX. But actually here is explanation why it is called CX, here it is called control X. So I think we could change and after explaining and say it's control X. And then you explain control Y and control Z. And after that, you say about totally, and actually it's like control, control X. And here you can explain why it's called C six. So that is just language for I think it's not a big deal. So yeah. I already wrote the uh, details up here. And uh, and one small thing about the uh, U three operation. Uh, also just small but like here the coefficient, the sign is after the E to I five, but here it's the before. So I think for a beginner maybe it's a bit confusing to see the matching. Oh, and also actually in the tensor border park, I think we should have um, a general formula of how you do a tensor border. Maybe it's already covered in the linear algebra part, but like for example here you want to do uh, here. You want to do two operations and here. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's difficult for people that doesn't have very good in algebra to understand why these two come together become this. Okay, so, so you uh, want maybe uh, you can re maybe you can refer back to here. I don't know whether linear algebra okay, so, is it. Yeah, so there is a book uh, no, not book. Uh, we can basically yeah. Is there does it explain the tensor problem? Yeah. So yeah. So uh, what type? Uh, what I was saying is basically uh, for linear algebra part, we can like I don't. Uh, what I'm looking at is I don't think so that this is enough for if you want to know more about linear algebra perspective of all the things. All mm -hmm. But you don't like. Well, one of the thing is like for example, you just say here you put mm -hmm. uh, I don't know all the coefficients. Yeah. Like general coefficients. A zero zero, A zero one, A one zero, A one one, and this, and you have a general formula before of this, and then maybe, you can put yeah. a more specific. So yeah, maybe because later on you have a bit more yeah. this, and I think for first time you really okay. Uh, confused. Okay, okay, for these are how do you get this? Uh, June, what I'm saying is this: uh, even if you like, mm -hmm. if you write things at a naught, a naught, and say uh, do all this thing, you can better add a link, a uh, simple like uh, a link for uh, linear yeah. algebra explanation. That would yeah, be good. Yeah, we can do that. Because, yeah, mm -hmm. because adding things like general things in the textbook itself will make it. Uh, what to yeah, say? Landy, right? Landy or messy. Messy will be the correct mm -hmm. word. Because yeah, but we should, yeah. we should, we should, we should get a link. Yeah, so because, for the link, because uh, if the text doesn't say anything, I think the reader may think, "Oh, this is something so trivial that but I don't understand and I feel discouraged." Yeah, so it could be just like one plus one for other people. That's what they yeah, are would it be possible to add this part to the to the section in linear algebra, maybe? Uh, yeah, here or, or maybe general, create, right? create maybe a section in the prerequisites for people who are new to to these uh, mathematical things, notations and concepts. Yeah, yeah, maybe you already have. I haven't taken a look at here. So we can uh, add something into the linear algebra section, but the you know, better like for this thing, it's good that you add a reference for a simple linear algebra book. Anything will be good. You can take uh, something from mm -hmm. 
MIT lecture notes to uh, yeah, some book. Uh, but since they yeah. already cover some basics, I think it works just to add here. Yeah. Then they don't need to refer to other places. It's just one small step. Yeah, I mean, just just add a quick refresher on how these things uh, can be computed. Uh, just a one-liner mm -hmm. or two-liner intro, and then the people can go figure yeah, yeah. it out themselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah. Uh, that's good. That will be good. So we can write, write basically general formula of everything, and perhaps they might be able to do it. And let's see. Yeah. yeah so what's the next thing? Um. Okay. Also, some simple thing like this. Uh. Therefore, in the mathematical symbol, it just doesn't appear, and I don't know, may not everyone knows. Because if you have done your high school education, you may know, but we should just add some explanation. There was this place here. That okay. Oh, oh, okay. It could be it. really confusing. Okay, yeah. <laughs> if I you see, don't yeah. know math, right? Yeah, so it will be good that if uh, somebody added this textbook and make it a one more yeah, sentence. Just add here. This means therefore. Yeah, I got it. So okay, yeah. fine. Uh, for this thing, that it will be better that somebody uh, who has the rights to edit this edit uh, this book should edit all yeah. this. Uh, editing part can be sent on later on. So yeah, yeah I guess. Uh, and, mm -hmm. Yeah, anything related to concept or reference or explanation. Well, concept. Um. Yeah. Maybe here. Yeah. In the entangled state. Mm -hmm. I don't understand why this is for even and why this is for odd number of one outcome. Why is it defined in this way? Okay. Uh. Uh. And for entangled state, let me. Sorry, I haven't read it. Uh. Before, let me see once. Wait. Uh, the way I mm -hmm. understand it is that uh, um, a zero represents uh, all the even entangled states, which is zero zero. The the uh, you know the state zero zero and one one, mm -hmm. and and mm -hmm. one one represents all the uh, odd entangled states, which is zero one and one zero. So uh, mm -hmm. we are uh, the, you know showing co correlations uh, by segregating them into uh, odd states and even states. Is that, that's that's how I understand it. So it's like the same or different? Oh no, actually not same or different because when you have more than two, yeah. Yeah, and more than two, that that'll that'll be a problem. So uh, we, we we need to maybe see how we can. Work uh, with that. Okay. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So what I was saying is this: that um, for why it is, uh, June, you were asking why it is given the notation p zero and p one for even and even and odd, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's basically, uh, the notation zero and zero, uh, one is be, uh, just a uh, like uh, number given to it, and z. Uh, what you do is that you take out odd and even state, and then you compare it for entanglement. Uh, actually. It, Requires a whole lot of explanation about uh, uh, what to say. You, uh, it's density matrix and all. But in simple words, what mm -hmm. I can say is, you take all the four possible states and you separate it out in odd and even format, just to know that which one survives at the end. So uh, it's more of a what to say, a primary way of uh, calculating entanglement. It doesn't give you amount of entanglement and any uh, other things but for the time being mm -hmm. uh, it's good to just check it out like this but yeah, it's not a proper calc uh, but, proper but here is trying to explain i mean we can think about more conceptual level not like the, just the math example here just saying expectation value of a certain state when you do two is that measurement on the individual qubits and what is the outcome and probability or outcome and this is just given by this probability. And yeah. it's not separating 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Why is mm -hmm. that? Because we don't care about all the four individuals. We only care about even and odd, or because mm -hmm. we can't know. OK, uh, so sorry, I lost that. OK, so you were asking, let me repeat it, that if we try the same thing on single qubit, instead of doing it for two, Right. Mm -hmm. So we already yeah, learned then, that before, right? If it is for single qubit, it's just that and that, which is just the probability of outcome of zero, probability of outcome zero minus probability of outcome of one. 
okay yeah so here's which the means thing. it's uh, like okay june it's not a defined concept so we are mm. using just a primary tool and a single qubit cannot dangled because you need at least two qubit to be entangled yes, yes, right of course yeah so so this is kind of a uh, a cheat trick that they are using it for two qubit and so on so you can write it here that it is used for two qubit and more uh, because in, uh, using it for one qubit doesn't make sense but yeah for if you want to know more no, about it we use this for one qubit right it's just to calculate the expectation value of qubit so yeah okay this was so was covered earlier and Yeah, where? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I got it. So you are saying that this is expectation uh, from one qubit to uh, so what we are doing here, we are to uh, using two z me measurements on both the qubits, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So uh, this is the like kind of result you will get in this uh, uh, in this part. So uh, what I uh, basically mean is uh, it doesn't. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, you can say it like this that for one qubit when you measure it it doesn't matter that whether you take uh, this thing p0 p minus 1 it doesn't uh, give you any uh, physical result but when you use for two qubit and since you are measuring everything in z basis and you are using this two z measurements it does give you this kind of explanation but if you want to actually know the physical significance or relate it i think it's not correct so you can modify it or um, modif uh, let's modify it a little uh, like let's modify it a little bit but I don't think so this makes it much correct because for entanglement measure it's not even correct and yeah if you are trying to relate it with just the expectation value of Z and this thing uh, no it doesn't make sense hmm. Yeah, I feel oh, it doesn't yeah, really so, help you to appreciate how entangled it is mm. or what it is. I don't know. You, yeah, I feel not, that you try to link with a concept you already learned for single qubit and to extend to uh, yeah. two qubit and see what how you calculate. That's but what I was saying, good. that it's a yeah. cheat trick. It's just a cheat trick that for do it quite fast, you just gave it something mm. like that. So it's not... So uh, that problem. reminds me of another thing I want to ask. Yeah. Is, uh, is it possible to represent a multi qubit state in block sphere? No. Or something not, similar. No. I think it's not called block sphere. There's something else that is also a okay, so, geometrical uh, let me tell you uh, this representation. Thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah. Till now, Maybe you can share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please. Okay. I guess, but that's pay. Uh, that's paid. So I have to check that whether I have my subscription right now or not. But let's see. So this is Q control. Uh, basically, mm -hmm. uh, this gives you uh, what to say uh, a little about visualization and other thing, but it's not free, so uh, we can't use it. But yeah, uh, if you have some doubts, you can definitely like visit this site, and you will get 30 day or perhaps 15 day. Okay, my trial is also gone, but uh, let me check that whether I can get something out of it. Okay, no, nothing. I can get nothing. So, um, mm -hmm. it, it requires two, uh, what to say, uh, two block sphere with one entanglement map and two to three different kinds of map which they used. It's one, uh, like what to say, it's one kind of thing that maybe you, you can use. show the video that is on the web. Yeah, maybe includes the part that is, uh, and you can keep talking while showing. We're gonna have a look. Okay, 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 okay. So uh, uh, the thing is that it, I'm not actually able to uh, log in and show you what I wanted to show you. But yeah, for the time being, it's good that you can see the uh, see this one is Q control and how things goes here. So mm -hmm. okay, so it's possible, but it's uh, not so straightforward to. So to let me just go to that uh, that part where yeah. So see, mm -hmm. this kind of rotation are uh, you can, can see. Can you make it bigger? Uh, okay, well, bigger. Oh, wait.
Is Q control actually useful for experiment or just a uh, visualization tool? It's a basic. It's a tool for uh, quantum computers to check it, and then uh, basically, it's a tool for engineering uh, engineers that uh, how they create a quantum computer. And this is for simple testing. You can only use simple gates here, not any complex gates. So basically, it shows you the rotation, where something mm -hmm. is moving, in which direction. Yeah, this is the thing for two qubit. Yeah, for the illustration, if you can make something similar to this, it would be easier for people to understand it. 6K, YK, and stuff. Okay, nice so there's one, there's one more free thing which you can try if you want to. So uh, this is the thing that if you go to simulate, uh, let me entangle something and show you. Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. So here you can get... Uh, uh, this separate blocks. Uh, what will be the uh, what do you say? Yeah, state for one each qubit, qubit zero, mm -hmm. qubit one, and probabilities are here. Uh, uh, and anything else? Like, yeah, show entanglement. I guess Why this not? one is okay. So this one is actually uh, under construction. I can say, but this part will show you uh, actually what you want to uh, like what kind of entanglement it has or something else so here's a, this is the thing that basically uh, you can use but q control is better in visualization and actually for uh, quantumcircuit.com the company which owns it quantastica is kind of try uh, trying to improve it i work for mm -hmm. them but i don't work with this part actually gui and other mm -hmm. things so they are trying to improve these things so if it is like if after some time it becomes better enough i will tell them to uh like give a reference or something like that on the quiz kit textbook mm -hmm. we want to that would be nice but actually, have, even just yeah. in our textbook reading group we should share this uh useful tool like you say the uh kirks or or, or this quantum circuit.com and the q control that yeah. help to understand the concept that is covered would be nice yeah so uh these are the things which okay. you can yeah so uh, so it's not possible to show in blocks here. You need to have a few different things to, to show multi qubits. Sorry, sorry, sorry. State. I was disconnected. Okay. There's so no very good visualization for multi qubit. Uh, multi -qubit. Yeah, so uh, any other doubt, June? Any other thing which you want to share or we That's can all, talk I about? Think it's pretty good. I think this time we can we have pretty good discussion. Okay, yeah. So, uh, June, what we can do that you can post your uh, set of uh, feedbacks in a GitHub repo. Mm -hmm. It will be good instead of using a thread in Slack because it makes it more and more yeah, messier. Yeah, I also think so. Maybe yeah, I'll so just we, pull it on as an issue on the yeah, so, GitHub repo. Yeah, try to put it on GitHub repo. And if I can reply, I will definitely keep on adding links and other things. And mm -hmm. Who is the in okay. charge or who, which, who, like, I want to know that who manage all these kind of edits and everything inside the textbook? Uh, I think there's a new person called Francis or Francis. Uh, uh, I mean, if you, if you uh, make pull Francis requests, they, they would, they would get approved uh, anyway. Like I can, I can redirect the people from, from his case. I mean, someone, so one of the workspace managers would definitely reach out. Uh, so so okay. that, that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah. Okay, so if that's the thing, then uh, it will be good, Sam, if you talk to them yeah, sure, uh, sure, sure, sure. beforehand. Absolutely. And uh, we, they will create a, a separate separate topic for each of the feedbacks, and then I can give the links there, and if there are some supposed edit, I will tell yeah. them to edit it. And if they can, mm -hmm. they will, and if they, will, uh, like if they need some help, I'm ready to do that. It's just a simple okay, editing, cool. so I will do it. Sounds Thanks. good. Hmm. Uh, anything else? Uh, do we have any any more points of discussion? I think that's all for me. That's all for today. Yeah. Okay, I think I think we had a wonderful yeah. discussion. Uh, thanks again, Zunye and uh, uh, Rahul. Very nice. This was yeah. this was fantastic. Yeah, thank I you for showing all the tools. <laughs> I, I know, right? Like this yeah. this this. Yeah. Was, I think this was a very informative and a very um, uh, engaging discussion. And uh, uh, we yeah. can we can uh, you know keep this as a. As a, you know, as a resource for for our future discussions, and I think we covered uh, everything that we wanted to in the session for this week. 
uh, uh, j- just a spoiler, the, the next session is going to mm-hmm. be very bland. It's going to kind of only, uh, you know, include questions because I think we've covered most of the feedback here. Once again, a reminder, I will be oh, yeah. adding a feedback thread uh, to the Slack channel right after this call. And uh, for mm-hmm. uh, for the rest of the chapters in the in the first section of the textbook, the quantum states and qubits, uh, uh, would be covered uh, tomorrow morning uh, by Daniel uh, on his uh, YouTube channel, the link for which I have uh, given over here. Uh, again, for those who uh, haven't checked it out yet. So he will be doing his uh, live walkthrough of the textbook tomorrow morning uh, at uh, Sunday uh, 9, uh, wait, 9? Yeah, it was uh, 9 to 11 uh, a.m. Uh, Central European time. So, okay. and, and I would return back uh, tomorrow evening, uh, 8 to 10 p.m. Uh, Indian Standard Time. So, uh, thank you again for joining and thanks for this wonderful discussion. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's let's end the stream for today and we will see you in the next session. Thank you. Okay, thank you.